Veda, Veda, is an endangered language which is used by the indigenous Veda people of Sri Lanka. Additionally, communities such as Coast Vedas and Anuradhapura Vedas, that do not strictly identify themselves as Vedas also use words from the Veda language in part for communication during hunting and or for religious chants, throughout the island. When a systematic field study was conducted in 1959, the language was confined to the older generation of Vedas from Dambana. In 1990s self-identifying Vedas knew few words and phrases in Veda, but there were individuals who knew the language comprehensively. Initially there was considerable debate amongst linguists as to whether Veda is a dialect of Sinhalese or an independent language. Later studies indicate that the language spoken by today's Vedas is a creole which evolved from ancient times, when the Vedas came into contact with the early Sinhalese, from whom they increasingly borrowed words and synthetic features, yielding the cumulative effect that Veda resembles Sinhalese in many particulars, but its grammatical core remains intact. The parent Veda languages is of unknown linguistic origins, while Sinhalese is part of the Indo Aryan branch of Indo European language family. Phonologically, Veda is distinguished from Sinhalese by the higher frequency of palatal sounds C and the effect is also heightened by the addition of inanimate suffixes. Morphologically, the Veda word classes are nouns, verbs and invariables, with unique gender distinctions in animate nouns. It has reduced and simplified many forms of Sinhalese such as second-person pronouns and denotations of negative meanings. Instead of borrowing new words from Sinhalese or other languages, Veda creates combinations of words from a limited lexical stock. Veda also maintains many archaic Sinhalese terms from the 10th to 12th centuries, as a relic of its close contact with Sinhalese. Veda also retains a number of unique words that cannot be derived from Sinhalese. Veda has exerted a substratum influence in the formation of Sinhalese. This is evident by the presence of both lexical and structural elements in Sinhalese which cannot be traced to either Indo-Aryan or neighboring Dravidian languages. History It is unknown which languages were spoken in Sri Lanka before it was settled by Prakrit-speaking immigrants in the 5th century BCE. The term, Veda is a Dravidian word and stems from Tamil word vidu meaning hunting. Cognate terms such as badar, beta are used throughout South India to describe hunter-gatherers. Sri Lanka has had other hunter-gathering peoples such as the Radhya and Kinaraya. The earliest account of Veda was written by Rykloff van Goens (1663–1675), who served as a director general of the Dutch East India Company in Sri Lanka. He wrote that the Veda's language was much closer to Sinhalese than to Tamil. Robert Knox, an Englishman held captive by a Candian king, wrote in 1681 that the wild and settled Vedas spoke the language of the Sinhalese people. The Portuguese friar Fernão de Queiroz, who wrote a nuanced description of Veda in 1686, reported that the language was not mutually intelligible with other native languages. Robert Percival wrote in 1803 that the Vedas, although seemingly speaking a broken dialect of Sinhalese, amongst themselves spoke a language that was known only to them. But John Davies in 1831 wrote that the Vedas spoke a language that was understood by the Sinhalese except for a few words. These discrepancies in observations were clarified by Charles Pridham, who wrote in 1848 that the Vedas knew a form of Sinhalese that they were able to use in talking to outsiders, but to themselves they spoke in a language that, although influenced by Sinhalese and Tamil, was understood only by them. The first systematic attempt at studying the Veda language was undertaken by Hugh Neville, an English civil servant in British Ceylon. He founded the Taprabanian, a quarterly journal devoted to the study of everything Ceylonese. He speculated, based on etymological studies, that Veda is based on an old Sinhalese form called Hila. His views were followed by Henry Parker, another English civil servant and the author of Ancient Ceylon 1909, who wrote that most Veda words were borrowed from Sinhalese, but he also noted words of unique origin, which he assigned to the original language of the Vedas. The second most important study was made in 1935 by Willem Geiger, who also sounded the alarm that Veda would be soon be extinct and needed to be studied in detail. One of the linguists to heed that call was Manaku W. Sugathapala da Silva who did a comprehensive study of the language in 1959 as a PhD thesis, which he published as a book. According to him, the language was restricted to the older generation of people from the Dambana region, with the younger generation shifting to Sinhalese, whereas Coast Vedas were speaking a dialect of Sri Lankan Tamil that is used in the region. 
During religious festivals, people who enter a trance or spirit possession sometimes use a mixed language that contains words from Veda. Vedas of the Anuradhapura region speak in Sinhalese, but use Veda words to denote animals during hunting trips. Classification <laughs> 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 Dialect of Sinhalese or independent language. Early linguists and observers of the language considered it to be either a separate language or a dialect of Sinhalese. The chief proponent of the dialect theory was Wilhelm Geiger, but he also contradicted himself by claiming that Veda was a relaxified aboriginal language. More recently, linguist John McWhorter contested the modern classification of Veda as a creole, supporting instead the claim that Veda is a dialect, a kind of Sinhalese with Veda decorations. According to McWhorter, this classification of Veda as a creole came from older now obsolete methods of language taxonomy, resulting in an overextension of the definition of creole in order to account for the nature of Veda's mixed grammar. Vedas consider the Veda language to be distinct from Sinhalese and use it as an ethnic marker to differentiate them from Sinhalese people. Creole based on Sinhalese The first comprehensive study of the language was undertaken by Manaku W. Sugathapala da Silva in 1959. He, along with K. N. O. Dharmadasa, have put forward the view that Veda is a Creole. According to da Silva, Veda is a Creole based on the original Veda language, with Sinhalese as the second most important contributing factor, which is supported by Geiger view that Veda is a relaxified Aboriginal language. De Silva concluded that although the Creole had borrowed profusely from Sinhalese vocabulary, its morphology was very distinct. He also concluded that Veda still contains in its vocabulary terms that were unknown to the Sinhalese. He wrote that grammatically Veda remained still distinct from Sinhalese. In 1990 K. N. O. Dharmadasa wrote that irrespective claims about whether the Veda form in use in the 1990s is an independent language or a creole, the peculiarities of the language made it still a distinct linguistic form different from all varieties of Sinhalese. According to De Silva and Dharmadasa, when the colonization of Ireland by various Indian settlers using common Prakrits in use in India began in the 5th century BCE, some elements of the Veda coalesced with the settlers and lost their language through language replacement. Whereas more conservative elements maintaining a hunter-gatherer lifestyle moved into the central highlands known in early literature as Malaya Rada. Most Indian settlers colonized the north, northwestern, eastern and southeastern lowlands of the country specifically Rajarata and Ruhuna, leaving the heavily forested central highlands to the ancestors of Vedas. With the collapse of the lowland dry zone civilization starting in the 9th century, descendants of the Indian settlers who had begun to speak Sinhalese moved in the central highlands. The trade and other connections made by the speakers of Sinhalese and the Veda language s, languages. Unknown genetic affinities gave rise to a period of use of a pidgin of the languages. Initial borrowing of terms was limited to trade purposes, but was eventually adopted by the Veda elite and subsequently by the rest of the Vedas. The Vedas also seem to have moved further away from Sinhalese contact by moving into inaccessible forests of Bintane and now reforested former dry zone areas. This led to the arresting of the contact between the language communities thus allowing new Veda language to stabilize and become an independent language. As a relict of this limited period of contact, Veda maintains many archaic Sinhalese words that were in vogue during that period. These words have gone out of use in contemporary Sinhalese. Grammar <laughs> <laughs> In Sinhalese, indicative sentences are negated by adding a negative particle to the emphatic form of the verb, whereas in Veda, the negative particle is added to the infinitive. In Sinhalese, all indicative sentences whether negative or affirmative, exhibits two tenses, past and non-past, but in Veda a three-term tense system is used in affirmative sentences, but not in negative. Sinhalese pronouns have number distinction, but Veda does not have number distinction. The Veda verbal and nominal inflections are similar to Sinhalese but are not identical. Veda also exhibits a gender classification in inanimate and animate nouns. Phonology <laughs> 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 Although in phonemic inventory Veda is very similar to Sinhalese, in phonotactics it is very dissimilar to Sinhalese. The usage of palatal affricates c sounds similar to ch in church, and sounds similar to j in judge 
is very high in beta. Some comparisons This effect is heightened by the addition of inanimate suffixes such as poja, geja or raka. These suffixes are used in tandem with borrowings from Sinhalese. These transformations are very similar to what we see in other Creole languages like Melanesian Pidgin English and Jamaican English Creole. The preponderance of the palatal affricates is explained as a remainder from days when the original Veda language had a high frequency of such phonemes. Morphology <inaudible> 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 Formerly distinct Veda nouns have two types of suffixes, one for animate and another for inanimate. Topic. Animate nouns Topic. The animate suffixes are ato for personal pronouns and lato for all other animate nouns and poja and raaccaa for personified nouns. Examples are Deyalatu God Panilato Worm Miato, Iroi, Iropoja, Sun, Jiniraka, Fire. These suffixes are also used in singular and plural meaning based from the verbal and non-verbal context. Botakanda nam pucha kadava hyora miato, Sir, I killed the elephant though. Miatan kuriamalato kala pojan mangakana kota iatan badapoje kakulak randala inditibala tabenava. When our great grandmother was walking in the forest, there was a child conceived in that one's womb. The dependence on verbal and non-verbal context for semantic specification, which is accomplished by inflectional devices by natural languages, as an indication of a contact language. Certain words that appear to be from original Veda language do not have these suffixes. Also animate nouns also have gender distinctions, with small animals treated as feminine I marker and larger ones masculine a marker. Botakanda elephant. Kankana deer. Karia bear. Hatara bear. Okma buffalo. Kandarni bee. Mundi monitor lizard. Potty bee. Makini spider, Ikini louse. Topic: Inanimate nouns. Topic: Inanimate nouns use suffixes such as rukula and danda with nouns denoting body parts and other suffixes such as poja, tana, and geja. Suffixes are used when the words are borrowed from Sinhalese. Arakula I. Ugorodanda throat. Vidipoja street, Karigaja coconut, Kavatana verse, Jiniraka fire. There are number of forms that are from the original Veda language that don't have suffixes such as Galraki axe, Kalava pot, Buka bush. Veda inanimate nouns are formed by borrowing Sinhalese adjectives and adding a suffix. Kavi is Sinhalese adjective for kavya the noun, but whereas Veda noun is kavi tana, where tana is a suffix. Topic. Pronouns Topic. Examples of pronouns are miato I, topan you, iyaba there, koiba where. Compared to Sinhalese which requires five forms to address people based on status, Veda uses one topan irrespective of status. These pronouns are also used in both singular and plural denotations. Topic. Numerals. Topic. These are found in definite and indefinite forms, ekama 1, def, and ekamic once, in def, they count ekame, dekame and tuname. Veda also reduces the number formations found in Sinhalese. Topic. Negation Topic. Another example of simplification in Veda is minimizations of negative meanings found in Sinhalese. Topic. Lexicon Topic. Many of the Veda words are directly borrowed from Sinhalese or Tamil via Sinhalese while maintaining words that are not derivable from Sinhalese or its cognate languages from the Indo-Aryan language group. Veda also exhibits a propensity for paraphrases and it coins words from its limited lexical stock rather than to borrow words from other languages including Sinhalese. For example, Topic. Archaic terms 
Topic. Veda maintains in its lexicon archaic Sinhalese words that are no longer in daily usage. These archaic words are attested from classical Sinhalese prose from the 10th century until the 13th century, the purported period of close contact between the original Veda languages and Old Sinhala leading to the development of the Creole. Some examples are Devla in Veda means sky but a 10th century Sinhalese exegetical work called Dampya Atuva Gedapadaya, it is used in the meaning of cloud. Dhyamacha in Veda meaning fish is similar to Dhyamas found in a 10th century monastic work called Sikavalanda. Manda in Veda means near or with. This word is attested in the 12th century eulogy called Butsarana. Kumantana meaning wearing apparel is similar to the Sinhalese word kanama found in the 13th century work Umaga Jatakaya alternatively kamanam in Tamil is a loincloth, a cloth worn by early Vedas. According to research at the turn of the 20th century by British anthropologists Charles and Brenda Seligman, the use of archaic Sinhalese words in Veda may have arisen from the need to communicate freely in the presence of Sinhalese speakers without being understood. They claimed that this need encouraged the development of a code internal to the Veda language that included archaic Sinhalese words as well as mispronounced and invented words in order to intentionally obfuscate meaning. Topic: Substratum influence in Sinhalese. Topic: According to Geiger and Gare, Sinhalese language has features that set it apart from other Indo-Aryan languages. Some of the differences can be explained by the substrate influence of parent stock of the Veda language. Sinhalese has many words that are only found in Sinhalese or it is shared between Sinhalese and Veda and cannot be etymologically derived from Middle or Old Indo-Aryan. Common examples are kola in Sinhalese and Veda for leaf, dola in Sinhalese for pig and offering in Veda. Other common words are rara for wild duck and gala for stones in toponyms found throughout the island. There are also high-frequency words denoting body parts in Sinhalese such as oluva for head, kakula for leg, bela for neck and kalava for thighs that are derived from pre-Sinhalese languages of Sri Lanka. The author of the oldest Sinhalese grammar, Siddhatsangarava, written in the 13th century have recognized a category of words that exclusively belong to early Sinhalese. It lists Naramba to see and Kalamba ford or harbor as belonging to an indigenous source. Colombo is the source of the name of the commercial capital Colombo. Topic. See also. Topic. Balangoda Man. F. A. Heen Cave. Topic. Notes. Topic. Topic References Topic Topic Cited Literature Topic <references>